Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. BoxingVoice.com. What broke him down? Was it the body punching? I was hitting with body punching. I heard him actually was crying in there. You were saying your big was crying when you hit him? Yes. When when did that happen? And clap the fourth round on. BoxingVoice.com. So you knew you had him by that Absolutely. time. Absolutely, I knew you were talking, you were talking, you were taking those punches. Oh, Making women dresses like, oh, oh, oh. Let's go check. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another morning edition of the Boxing Voice Radio. Today, we're going to be bringing you uh, a live interview with Banner Promotions promoter Artie Palulo, same promoter of Demetrius Andrade, same promoter of Peter Petrov, who's going to be taking on Terry Flanagan for that WBO title. And there is some breaking news that we're bringing you today on this episode. The WBO light championship title fight between Terry Flanagan and Peter Petrov has received some enormous news for us United States viewing boxing fans. This fight was going to take place in the United Kingdom, and it will be streamed on Box Nation. So we were not going to get the opportunity to watch this. We were not going to get the opportunity to see Peter Petrov in action, a guy that I know very well, a guy that's, you know, won. Uh, the Buxino tournament on ESPN a couple of years back, a guy that's been in the ring with Marcos Maidana, if you don't know. We were not going to get the opportunity to see this young man. Well, he's not that young. He's no spring chicken, but we were not going to get the opportunity to watch him fight versus this title opportunity on April 8th this weekend. But we are here to let you know that Artie Palulu of Banner Promotions has come together with Twitter, the social media giant, and they will have this fight live streaming. Now, I know people are like, oh, but this is no big deal. We've seen that done before. But before you start getting up in arms and saying this is nothing, let me get out to the Golden State so we could bring in my co-host and we could discuss this just a little bit further. Daladie Beyonce production. This is a beautiful performance against a very tough guy in Michael Johnson. How do you feel about it? Fuck yeah, Conor McGregor. Boxing from the wicked entrance, from the flip over the rock. Yeah, and for anyone that thinks that, oh, it's no big deal, I think you're really underestimating what is happening in this year. In about five years from now, we're going to look back on 2017 and say this year changed boxing in so many ways. And one of them is going to be the evolution of live streaming online for boxing. We've seen other combat sports go that route, UFC, kickboxing, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Now boxing's doing it. That's awesome, man. Like that, like the idea that anyone that has access to a Wi-Fi connection or an Ethernet cable pretty much can see this fight, honestly. It, open, it opens the door for so many more people to get their eyeballs on this fight. And you know how social media works. The instant it starts getting shared, it goes viral so much more faster than it can when it's on my television on CBS even. So this is huge. And it's just another trend of boxing changing. We've seen now two sanctioning bodies adopt VADA programs. We've now seen two different promoters and networks use Twitter to live stream a fight. We had Showtime doing Adrian Broner versus Adrian Granados. And that was Al Heyman, uh, you know, boxing and now we have banner promotions and frank warren doing this on twitter as well i mean we're this is a big momentum shift in boxing and we're about to see a huge paradigm shift in how we view boxing on television or online and this is the beginning of it so it's huge like this is not an understatement at all it is i mean um for anybody scratching their head like well wait a minute ness uh adrian broner and uh adrian granados was on twitter Showtime did this already. You're right. Showtime. A network giant, the equivalent of Coca-Cola or a Pepsi, HBO being the other one, okay? So when a guy like Artie Palulo 
who we all know, look, I mean, he's going to be on in a few minutes, right? So before he hears this, you know, he's not the biggest promoter. So for him to be able to finagle this deal, I'm very, very impressed. And I want to give him some publicity because it's, it's a great thing that he's done. I'm excited. I'm happy I get to watch this fight. So now what I'll do is I'll teach you guys a little technology for all my, you know, older folks out there, all my brads and stuff like that. What I want you to do is use your smartphone. If you have a Google Chromecast or some sort of fire stick where you can, you know, um, I think they call it Chromecast, your cell phone um, media to your television. Instead of holding your cell phone or your iPad all day on a couch, stream it to your television because that's the only way you're going to get Twitter on TV. Or or the maybe a more simpler solution is just hook up a computer with the HDMI cord. Just saying, you could do that as well. Yeah, but do, then doesn't that leave all the tabs and stuff on your screen? No, you just do full screen, dog. Come on. Okay, okay. I mean, that's really old-fashioned cables and shit, but whatever. If you want to <laughs> have a laptop and an HDMI cable and a charger for the laptop, hey, do your thing. Um, you could always use Chromecast, and if you have an iPhone, and I mean, like me, I got iPhone and I have Apple TV, so it's just like, boop, hit the triangle, and I airplay it to whatever television in the house I want to view it. Makes it very easy. I just want to applaud these guys for getting it done. Because I'll be honest, I didn't even know how I was going to watch this. I mean, I probably was going to watch it on my Box Nation Tiger stream, but, you know, other than that, I, what about my friends that, that that don't have the abilities that I do have? Um, but Matt, what time are we bringing uh, the man of the hour on? A couple more minutes. Uh, and I just wanted to state that for fighters such as Terry Flanagan and P Peter Petrov, who aren't big names in any sense of that term, you know, we have people like JD in the chat going, who are these guys? And JD is a hardcore who calls in and says he knows boxing. Nah, and he doesn't know JD these guys. Didn't say that. JD didn't say that. He's oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Come on. Who doesn't know Peter Petrov? Like, you kidding me? The dude fought Marcos Maidana. But that was before Maidana was anyone. Okay. He, Maidana he became lost, someone after that Miracon fight. And all right, Maidana all right. Fight, I would say. He also lost to Zlata Cannon, who got knocked out by Mikey Garcia. You know, he also fought. Um, what's that other guy? Right? It was uh, what's his name? Want me to box wreck him? Mm. Well, I know. All right. He definitely fought Michael Perez, Golden Boy fighter. He also fought Gamalia Diaz. I remember we used to have a Puerto Rican caller that called in a lot. Oh, Gamalia, Gamalia, you know, and yo, he he fought Gamalia. So he has a few names um, on his resume, definitely. I, I mean, if we're talking resume, I think he has the better resume. I think he, he really definitely does. faced the better competition. I mean, facing guys like Madonna and Zlatishan are high quality competition. And those losses were over four years ago now. You know, the, the Marcos Madonna loss was six years ago now. So this guy has greatly improved. And if you haven't seen him, you know, you just go on YouTube and you can watch full fights of his. You can watch highlights and stuff. Uh, the guy is really good. The, guy is, the guy's ability to slip on the inside and deliver combinations, really crisp combinations, is so unlike most Eastern European fighters that it's, it's a real treat. He's really slick. And I think that he's really going to, you know, spark up and really touch up Terry Flanagan. This is going to be Terry Flanagan's toughest fight. Listen, I watched the Boxino. I remember his first fight with Chris Rudd. You know, Chris Rudd hasn't fought since Petrov beat him. And 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 that's what Boxino is. I will admit, you know, they, they find the lower level people in the division and they try to create something out of them. So maybe Chris Rudd was not on Petrov's level at the time, but he ran through him. Then Fernando Carcamos was also doing his thing in the division, but he's just like Petrov, suffered a few losses in his career, and they met in the, you know, tournament. And, uh, yo, listen, what he did to Fernando Carcamo, you have to see it. See, because by going to BoxRec and looking at the names, if you haven't seen these fights, they're nothing. You can overlook what Petrov has been able to do since losing to guys like Zlatishin and Marcos Maidana. That being said, after that, Gamaliel Diaz, that's a guy that has a lot of experience. Even Marvin Contero and then Michael Perez. So I think with Flanagan, his biggest problem is going to be the pressure of Petrov. Petrov is like a, 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 a teenage mutant ninja turtle, the way that his back curls into the C position 
and he crouches down in that European guard so well that when you're trying to throw shots at him, he's so tightly blocked and he loves to counter while you're throwing your punches. This guy is dangerous. And I'm like, look, I'm going to be honest. I'm picking him. I'm picking him. You know, they, they both have about the same amount of power. And what I can tell you, if you want to put money on something, put money on Petrov's stamina, Petrov's activity in terms of how many punches he's throwing per round. This guy lets his hands go. He's not afraid. He's not afraid. You had to, had to watch him fight. Now, they both have a low knockout percentage. So this is going to be a back and forth slugfest because there's no way Flan Flanagan is going to either prove that he's a very skilled boxer or that he's going to be, you know, he's going to wither away to the pressure of Petrov. Yeah, and I, I, I'm picking Petrov as well. You know, have to stick to the hipster, you know, nickname that you've given me. Thank you for that, Ness. So I'm, I'm going to pick Petrov. Uh, Flanagan really hasn't beat anyone. His best win is Derry Matthews. Um, he doesn't really have that much pop. Uh, his head movement's lacking. His footwork's a little bit slow. He has good combination punching, but he's such a slow starter. That's my biggest concern with Terry Flanagan. Now, he has seemingly tried to fix that, and it's shown in like his Orlando Cruz fight and such. But still, I mean, that level of competition is so far lower than the level of competition that our, uh, Peter Petrov has done. And even though Peter Petrov has lost to some of those guys, you still learn stuff in those losses. And I, I, I just see Peter Petrov getting in on the inside of Terry Flanagan's super long reach and frame and beating him up. And uh, I also think that uh, Flanagan, you know, he's, he's never really wowed me. You know, like, I never get the impression that Flanagan's going to come in there and beat a Robert Easter Jr. Or come in there and beat a Mikey Garcia. Or beat a Linares. And I'm not saying Petrov can do that. But I definitely think Petrov gives those guys a tougher fight. Um, I'm just, I've never been that high on Flanagan. You know, he, he wowed me in that, I think it was that secondary Matthews fight. And... It just wasn't, it just wasn't anything impressive, you know. Like he, he's very simplistic in what he does, and he's good at it. But that, you know, the fundamentals only get you so far in boxing. For sure, but I mean, he can prove that he's special, right? He can show us that he has boxing ability because he's going to need it to stay away from Petrov. The only way to beat Petrov is to stay on the outside and avoid his pressure, or fight fire with fire like Madonna did, and uh, you know. Go straight at Hell's Kitchen. Um, remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be having the promoter of Banner Promotions, the man to put this breaking news together by having the ability and the rights to stream this fight live on Twitter so that everyone in the U.S. can watch it right on their smartphone or stream it to their television. Um, we're going to get to uh, Suleiman, the scholar, while we wait for Artie Palulo, who is in the United Kingdom, by the way, folks. So do. Uh, bear with us. Suleiman the Scholar, talk to us, my friend. Glad to have you back. How you doing? Um, yeah, this is going to be an exciting fight. This guy, um, these two guys are proven fighters. That they, they are there to show. They want to go to the next level, how to get a unification fight. So um, it's, it's going to be a must-watch, and I'm going to be watching this fight. Um, I'm going to be listening to the show. You have a great day. Suleiman, thank you for calling in. Matt, are we good? I'm going to get to another caller then. Um, I mean, in New Jersey, talk to us, brother. Were you, let oh, me know, yeah. let me know something here. I mean, were you um, going to have the ability to watch this before you heard this breaking news? Oh, got to let you go. Got to let you go. Looks like we have the promoter of Banner Promotions. Artie Palulo on the line. So, I mean, we will get back to you out in New Jersey without a doubt. We're going to go to the United Kingdom, right to the promoter of Peter Petrov and Demetrius Andrade, along with others, to discuss this amazing breaking news. Um, Matt, are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right. Artie, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here, guys. Mr. Peludo, I just want to thank you very much. I know you're 
in another country on another time zone and you're making the the time and the effort for the boxing voice to 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 just give us a little update on this breaking news i just want to applaud you i know that we've seen this done with adrian broner and adrian granados but you know to to watch banner promotions put this fight a fight that only box nation was going to be airing in another country which the u.s just could not get their eyes on I am 100% familiar with Peter Petrov and everything that he brings to the table. I watched him do his thing in the Buxino tournament that you put together, and I just want to applaud you, give you a platform to just say, how do you get this together? How do you get it done? Well, first of all, thank you guys for having us, and uh, it's going to be a great fight on Saturday night. Uh, Peter is looking really good. He's really comfortable. He is uh, really comfortable in his own skin, and he believes he's going to win the fight. And what we've been doing over the last couple of years is the world's changing and how people view sports is changing. And uh, we took a little bit of the lead from the NFL last year. And we've been working on trying to get on Twitter. This is the first time that you can watch a fight on Twitter exclusively. When Showtime did it, when Steven did it, he, it was an open weekend. It was on all their platforms and then they opened it up to Twitter. So we were able to make a deal with the, the people at Twitter in San Francisco where you can only watch this fight on Twitter in the United States. So it's going to be pretty cool stuff, guys. It's the future. You know you know that. You're all younger than I am, and you know it's the future. And uh, we really expect a lot of things. And the CEO of uh, Twitter was just – he jumped all over it when we sat down with him and said, this is what we want to do, and we want to put this fight on Twitter, and we, and we want you guys to give it free to the world in the United States. Not to the world, but in the United States. So we're, we're hoping for good things from this, hopefully leading to other things. Now, Artie, not not to get in your pockets or anything, but how does this work for you when typically um, a, a promoter looks for a network to kind of buy the fight, maybe give them a sanction if fee, whatever the case may be? But how does this work for you so that we just a reassurance that we're going to be able to see something like this? Because I'm sure all our listeners would have loved to see Demetrius Andre versus Jack Kulke on Twitter. Well, the timing wasn't right for that fight because it takes a long time to, uh, to implement something, these kind of things. And, and uh, this is free to everybody who ha is a Twitter follower. It's free to everybody who goes on Twitter. And uh, what we're trying to do is to build something for the future. So it's, it's time consuming. And we weren't able to pull it off for Andre's fight. But uh, hopefully it goes well uh, with this fight because this is a fan friendly fight. Listen, Peter Petrov and Terry Flanagan are two guys that have come to fight. You know, I used to say it's TV friendly, but it's not. It's now Twitter friendly and fan friendly. So it's going to be a great fight. And it's the future, guys. It's the future of how everybody sees things. My children brought me into the 21st century with a smart television. So that's I'm 61 years old, so I got it. It took me a little long to get it, but I got it. Hey, already hey, already the, the, the boxing voice. Uh, I just wanted to quickly ask, how do you how do you monetize something like a Twitter live stream? You know, with TV networks, they obviously pay you a certain amount, and then there's obviously advertisers. You know, how does the money work when you have Twitter? Same thing. Basically the same thing with television networks around the world and even in the United States. A lot of it is predicated on the sponsors and predicated on the advertisers, and people watch, and, you know, it's like anything else. Uh, all the different websites around the, around the world have, uh, have ads. So essentially what we're trying to do is tap, tap into like 70 million Twitter followers and hopefully have advertisers see that boxing is something that they're going to want to follow and boxing is something that they're going to want to advertise with. And then, you know, it's a growing process, but I'm doing this and it's going to be something we're, we're going to keep doing. So, but it's the same thing. So when you go around the world, if you went to Globo TV, they would pay you predicated on how much advertising people would buy the spot. So it's, a, it's the same process, but the difference is the audience is much bigger. And the people at Twitter, they want to be in the fight business, so they're pretty cool. Now, Artie, um, Terry Flanagan is a Frank Warren-promoted fighter. He has another guy that I assume would have some interest for you, or you would have some interest in him, in Billy Joe Saunders, 160-pound fighter. I mean, you got a 160-pound fighter in Willie Monroe Jr., <laughs> who seems to be the most uh, avoided middleweight outside of Gennady Golovkin in that division, to be honest with you. Well, that's one of the things we're talking about with Frank, with Willie. 
And then also the winner of the co-feature is fighting for the WBO interim title at 154 pounds. But I think they'll be interested in fighting Demetrius for the WBA world title as well. So there's a lot of things going on over here. It's a great country for boxing. And there, there's going to be 10, 12, 14,000 people in the arena. But that won't affect Peter Petrov because he, you know, his whole, his, his whole thing is he fights on the road. He's, his home is the road. So he did a great job in Boxino, and he's in a good position. And there are a lot of fights to be made with uh, Frank's new television deal, BT, and, and hopefully it'll be all on Twitter in the United States. Artie, what do you think about the potential of boxing following the WWE and the UFC and having like their own online subscription-based streaming service, similar to like a Netflix or Hulu? You know, do you think boxing will ever get to that level? We... It can get to that level, but we would all need to work together because not one promoter has enough content in order to supply the kind of content necessary where there's boxing all the time. And uh, for our sport to thrive and, and this new medium, it has to work together because everybody can put something on board, but not one promoter, not even Bob, has, a, has enough content to be able to do it on their own. It's so how getting everybody on board, unfortunately. So how, how would that happen? How can you get promoters to start working together to where you can get something like that? You know, promoters came and worked together to create like a new boxing video game. <laughs> well, I don't have all the answers. I just know you have to be patient, keep talking to everybody, and make sure that everybody feels comfortable that their product, the fighters that they have, will be in the mix of things. And uh, it's, it's not an easy prospect because there's a lot of different attitudes and there's a lot of different egos and there's a lot of different personalities. But if we're going to flourish, guys, and if we're going to grow, and boxing is going to grow. It's going to even grow even bigger. It's never gone anywhere. It's never going to go anywhere. It's a sport. It's the last bastion of greatness because it's two guys in the ring at the best of what they do at the moment they're doing it, fighting each other, and people just love that. So how does it grow? We have to have more... Uh, of an ability to sit down and work with each other. And it takes time. It takes time. And some guys don't want to do it because they feel they don't need it. And other guys do need it. So, you know, I have to break a lot of barriers. But, you know, I think I think that Showtime started it with the open weekend and then with what we're doing now with Twitter. And I think it's I think it's something that can grow if everybody gets on board to figure out how we can work with each other instead of kill each other all the time. Artie, so I, I don't know. Uh, much of Flanagan's opposition other than the notable names. What I do know is Petrov. You know, I know the names uh, Zlatishin or Maidana or Gamaliel Diaz or Fernando Carcamo. I know how well he did in that Buxino tournament. I know, you know, blue chip prospects like Michael Perez. How confident are you that your guy's going to basically pull away he's gonna have to rip away this title in in enemy territory but how confident are you in 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 his resume compared to flanagan's well you know you know let me just say this uh, peter is ready for the fight harry flanagan is an undefeated fighter that means he doesn't know how to lose yet that, and, and part of the problem is it might be that people see that you know uh, peter is a favorite in the fight or, or or he's fighting in his kid's hometown you know, at the end of the day, you don't know how good he is. You don't know if he'll rise to the occasion. A lot of athletes, when they have to rise to the occasion, they do. Many, many, many years ago, everybody picked uh, Roy Jones to lose to uh, – I'm, I'm losing my turn of foot now. Roy Jones was fighting uh, James Tony, and uh, Tony was going to kill him. And it didn't happen that way. So, you know, Roy Jones was a blue chipper, and he rose to the occasion. But what I'm saying to you is Terry Flanagan hasn't lost a fight, and he doesn't know how to lose. So he's going to come, and he's going to give his best, and it's going to be a very, very good fight. It is, in my opinion, a pick and fight. We just happen to think that we're in a better position at this time of his career, Peter, for this fight. So we'll see how it plays out. But it's, it's in anybody's fight. He's a, he's a good, good fighter. I've seen him fight before. He's a good fighter. He's a well, very good fighter. Well, Artie, we want to thank you again for your time. We, we understand how valuable it is, and we appreciate you all the way in the United Kingdom giving us the opportunity here in the United States to discuss the uh, Twitter live streaming of Terry Flanagan versus Peter Petrov Saturday night, not only now on Twitter, but also Box Nation. Artie, 
If you have any social media or any last statements for the listening public, we want to ask you to say it at this time and thank you again for your time. Well, what I what I what I want to leave it with is that this is the kind of fight that we're supposed to make. It's a good quality fight, and it's going to be great for Twitter and it's going to be great for boxing. So everybody, watch the fight on Twitter. You can do it all different kinds of ways. It's kind of, it's going to be something that is the start of the future, guys. So it'll be on our website as well and our Twitter account as long as along with Twitter. So it's going to be pretty cool. And and when I say it's the future, it's the future is now. It's what we make of it. So I want to thank you for having me, and I'm about to have a scotch because it's about the seven o'clock at night here. So I'll, what's that? Oh, what? Oh, no. oh, well, we'll grab one scotch or two. Oh, we might have two scotches. <laughs> so, but I'm going to make sure I have one for all my friends back home. And all I thank right. you for having me. Thank you again, Artie. Always a pleasure. There you have it, folks. Banner Promotions promoter Artie Palulo promotes. Fighters like Demetrius Andrade, who is now, I believe, the uh, WBA, right? Or WBO. WBO champion in the 154-pound division. He also promotes Peter Petrov, who's going to be fighting Terry Flanagan for his WBO lightweight title. And, and we can't forget the uh, other most feared or avoided, right? We should say avoided, middleweight Willie Monroe Jr. from Rochester. Um, we're going to go back out to these phone lines. I believe we had Amin on the line. In New Jersey, I mean, talk to us. So, Ness, to answer your question, I was just going to use, you know, the uh, fire stick. I was going because I like Box Nation because I like, you know, you can watch a uh, a show without getting, you know, the the, uh, the slant on it. But um, because I don't even, I, I just got an Instagram account. I don't have a Twitter, so I was going to go with the fire stick. But knowing, you know, that you can do it that way, that's always helpful. You know. So I, I wonder, you know, I didn't hear it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Ness. No, I was just going to say, what do you think about the little matchup, though? Um, How do you think it's going to play out? Listen, Petrov, I don't know if people remember that, that Boxino tournament. Uh, Petrov is, like you said, you described him ill because he's got like a turtle shell back. And, you know, if, if you know anything about boxing, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, he can deliver some, not knockout power, but his cumulative uh, punches seems to slow his opponents down when he's not lacking any stamina. So I think it's a great fight. Flanagan, Flanagan's a pretty, to me, I've seen him, uh, he, he comes across as a pretty uh, flashy fighter. He, you know, everybody likes using slick, um, but he is a pretty slick guy. I, I think him and Carl um, Frampton are very similar. You know, they roll his shoulders, good head movement, good lateral movement. They like to work the jab. He's like, get out of here, I mean. Don't even disparage Carl Frampton's name with the robotic nature of Terry Flanagan. Come on. Terry Flanagan's not robotic. I was getting ready to say he's a he's robotic in the sense of he got that European robotic, but he's actually looser than a lot of those European guys. I was gonna say that's why I say he's like a looser uh, Lee Selby. You don't think so, Matt? I think he's a little more tighter, Lee Selby, in my opinion. I think Lee Selby is a little more looser than him. Uh, I think Carl Frampton is uh, okay. the exact opposite of that stereotype in the UK of a boxer. I think Terry Flanagan is still in that mold of a UK fighter. I could be wrong. I mean, maybe. Ma you know, yeah, I I'll go back and watch some film, you know, just because you said it, and I really value your opinion, I mean, but. Man, you compared him to Carl Frampton. Carl Frampton does not fight like a European at all. Which is very true. Carl Frampton is one of the best European fighters I've seen in many, many years. I can say that. Did um did Artie speak on Boo Boo though? What's up with Boo Boo? I know you you mentioned, you know, when is his next fight? What is he doing? He mentioned the WBA belt, if if I'm not mistaken. Right, Ness? Well, well, he mentioned that the winner of this headline right who's the uh, liam smith william liam or something like that it's two yeah, guys liam smith and liam williams yeah so so they're like in some sort of um they're fighting for the wbo interim belt yeah so so what arlie is saying look instead of fighting for, i mean once they get done fighting for that interim they could just instead instead of waiting for the super champ they could just come and fight andre is basically what he's saying but it's nothing um official i mean i want to thank you obviously for calling i'm going to go out to the uk to uh, Coach Mitty, who usually doesn't want to talk, I'm always just listening, but we'll see. Coach, what's up? Hello, 
Coach Mitty. Yeah, it is definitely not working, Coach. You know, I think Skype updated. It's so weird, but um, because I can hear him faintly. Like it's, it's like if somebody was like across the house and trying yeah, to talk to me, yeah. I can like faintly make out that they're talking, but that's it. Mm -hmm. But um, we won't be able to wait for him while we restart in the Skype. What we will do is uh, let you guys know that um, our final thoughts on this is definitely I'm going with Petrov. Um, also, you know, what Artie Palulo was able to do with Twitter is amazing. I hope that, uh, other promoters, Heyman, Bob Arum, Oscar De La Hoya, Lou DeBella, everybody. And I know Heyman is a uh, quote unquote, not a, a promoter, but as a influencer of the sport, I, I, I would like him to, uh, implement this more. And the UK as well. I hope that even guys like Eddie Hearn do this, you know, for, for lower level fighters, like in Sam Eggington, for instance, right? Sam Eggington is a guy that's obviously, you know, right behind the footsteps of Kell Brook fighting and defeating a lot of his former opponents. So that's probably a big fight in the UK one day, especially if Brook either wins or loses to Errol Spence. Because think about it, a domestic comeback fight versus Eggington to get Brooke back in the mix after a loss to Earl Spence, people will probably chew it up. But we, we, and when I say we, I do know who Eggington is, but the listeners do not. And and we speak for them, and that's why this is the voice of the people, and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that we should have the ability to watch Eggington easily, seamlessly. Those are my final thoughts. I'm your host, Nestor Gibbs. Find me on Instagram and Twitter at NestGTO. Matthew. Yeah, I you know it was something very interesting that Artie said to me after he went off there, and you know I was saying you know, just thank you and all that, and we we're talking about just this whole breaking news and everything like that. And he said boxing needs this. I think that's the perfect way to describe it because boxing for some reason has had trouble getting eyeballs to watch. What's the best way to do that? You put it out on every social media platform, and you make everyone share that shit. And it will go viral easily because everyone loves a fight. That's that's just genetics right there that, you know, we can be at any, any other sporting event. And if there's a fight going on in the stands, we all turn and watch that instead of a Kobe Bryant or a Michael Jordan on the basketball court. Because fighting is just ingrained in us. And it, social media has changed the way the human civilization has interacted with each other. And boxing has been really behind on that technology front. And it's... Like I said at the very beginning of the show, this year is changing the game. It is. Like, the game will forever be changed after this year. And at the end of this year, we're going to be talking about how much boxing has changed. And this whole new paradigm shift of going to social media and live streaming, that, that's, that is the way of the future. I do agree with Artie on that. Um, and I'm pumped as a, as a millennial, as a 22-year-old, you know, as a cord cutter. You know, I don't, I'm not, that's what I want to be one day. You know, it, cut all cords and just have Wi-Fi and I'll be good because everything's going to be online. You know, that's the dream. But you can find me at Mixed Combat News on Twitter and my MMA podcast, Mixed Combat Radios, on Patreon, SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Facebook, etc. Peace. And, and obviously he's talking Wi-Fi other than doing the show. Need to be hooked up to Ethernet. Peace out.